I was listening to Talkback Radio. Every now and then something comes on that catches your interest. And there was this fellow rang in and said, people are writing nasty letters to the council about my hotel. They're complaining about it. And I don't know why they're complaining about my hotel. It's a perfectly well-run establishment. I run a hotel for swingers. Now, I was born and bred in Grafton, brought up. He had no idea what he was talking about. So I kept listening. And I was shocked. Do you know that in this great land of Australia, there are hotels where couples go and swap rooms and swap partners? I can tell by your shocked silence that you're just as shocked as me. I decided to expose this moral corruption and I wrote a poem about it called Swingers. There's this hotel in the city where the swinging people go and get up to hanky-panky as they swap rooms to and fro. It's a popular destination. They come from near and far and those that want to play the game just leave their door ajar. Now, Marge and Wally were a couple well into middle age, from a little country town where ballroom dancing was the rage. (laughs) They would foxtrot, waltz and barn dance, dance a treat to anything. They liked all kinds of dance music, but their favourite was swing. (laughs) Now, when they went to the city and were looking for a bed, Marge looked in the yellow pages and she found an ad that read, Are you looking for excitement? Are you game to have a try? We have great accommodation. Swingers only need apply. (laughs) Well, Marge wrote down the hotel number without a second glance. This is just the right place, Wally. We might even get to dance. But when they got to the hotel with their little dog in tow, the receptionist just shook his head and firmly told them no. No dogs allowed inside, he said. It just would not be right. But you can keep her with your car in the private car park for the night. Well, Marge agreed reluctantly to the receptionist's advice and Wally promised he would check on Flossie once or twice. They went up to room 17, up on the 14th floor, and Marge went into raptures as soon as they got through the door. What a lovely room! And Wally, what a huge big bed! And look! There's mirrors on the ceiling. I can see what's on my head. (laughs) Well, they wandered round the place to find the ballroom and the band, but there were no dancers, no musicians. They just didn't understand. Wally turned to Marge and said, this place seems pretty dead. It's only early yet and everybody's gone to bed. And before they went to sleep, about 10 o'clock that night, Marge said, Wally, check on Flossie. See that she's all right. Well, Wally tiptoed to the corridor and left the door ajar (laughs) and went down to check on Flossie, who was tied up near the car. He got back to room 17, found the door was still ajar, but he was on the 15th floor. He'd gone up one too far. And unaware of his mistake, he climbed back into bed, but instead of flannel nightgown, he found naked flesh instead. He thought, hello. Marge, old girl, (laughs) is this your holiday surprise? (laughs) He was going to turn the light on, but he didn't think it was. And before he knew it, he was seized in passionate embrace, and it was all that he could do to keep up with the pace. The agility that she displayed was out of all proportion. (laughs) He didn't know that Marge was capable of such contortions. (laughs) Meanwhile, someone came to Marge's room. Didn't give the dog a mention. Just dived straight into bed and began to give her close attention. He didn't have a stitch on, she was quick to realise. She thought, Wally, you old devil. Is this your holiday surprise? (laughs) Because he just started doing things she didn't know he could. All that muesli and yoghurt must have finally done some good. (laughs) And later on, she heard him going quietly out the door and she thought, good old Wally going down to check on Floss once more. (laughs) Meanwhile, upstairs, Wally staggered out, his head still in a fog. 
He went down to the car park and checked up on the dog. He got the floor right this time and was quickly back in bed. And Marge snuggled up close to him as he lay down his head. His former criticism of the place began to soften. He thought of it as this effect on Marge. We must come here more often. <laughs> and when they checked out next morning, the doorman didn't understand when they told him next time they came, they wouldn't miss the band. I had a great time, Wally, Marge said with a bashful glance. I'm not even disappointed that we didn't get to dance. <laughs> <laughs>